Welcome back, everybody, to A Bag of Tricks, episode 11, I want to say. For those of you not familiar, A Bag of Tricks is a new world podcast or a podcast dedicated to new world stuff. I'm your host, Baggins TV, and of course, we're joined by my magnificent co-host, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Trick. Hey. What's going on, Trick? How are you doing, bud? Yeah, I'm doing great, Mr. V. I, it's been a while. You took a vacation and everything. Whole expansion yeah. came out. Yeah, we got we got the Elysian Wilds and the 700 Gear Scott. Yeah, I think last time we did a podcast was just before the expansion came out. We were talking about stuff on the PTR. Right. And now, um, for the purpose of like people who may be listening to this back, we are one month. I think I think it's almost exactly one month since yeah. the expansion came out, right? It yeah, was yeah, like, yeah. like what was it, second or third of uh whatever the previous third? month yeah, just it was. Yeah, it was the third, yeah. But between the queues yeah. and the other things and stuff, yeah. Yeah, how are you feeling about the expansion track? Like from from like the the release week to now, like what are your thoughts and stuff, dude? How are you feeling about uh, current state of New World and just you know the expansion compared to like Brimstone Sands and and generally everything else in the game? Right. Uh, I mean, the expansion was was hella fun. I I'm pretty sure that every person that actually bought the expansion and tried the expansion, they had a lot of fun. For the exception of the queues, obviously. Anybody that played during the release of the, the expansion, you guys know that the queues were something else. And Yeah, we were back to Q World again, dude. Yeah, and for, for some people, it was not that bad. But for some others, you know, whenever they were like in number one, then they would get like disconnected again and be sent to the back of the line. But if you were able to get through that, you know, barrier, that obstacle, and you actually got mm. into the game... It, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. There were some minor issues. I will say the the main issues that actually we got in Season 3 was uh, the Ace of Staff quest and some other quests not actually working. But yeah. other than that, it was a lot smoother. Major content release, major patch that it brought in an insane amount of players. It was also, it, it can, you know, a lot of content with a new weapon, the flail, and obviously all of the artifacts. And I had a blast. I had a blast uh, the new island in the Elysian Wild that was like something so unique. It's like you get it's like you're playing another game. You see all of these jumping puzzles and and people over the place and the new resources which are very nice. I had a lot of fun and mm. overall the experience for me was very positive other than just the queue part. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's been pretty good as well. Mm -hmm. I, it is a shame like that the the queues. I know they've got like a solution now. I, I think you saw they have like if you log in and it's really busy, um it gives you the option to like character transfer without like paying or anything and mm -hmm. you don't actually need to log into the game, which is like really good. It's just it's a big shame they couldn't get that before, you know, the expansion came out. That would have been a, that would have been a life changer, I think. <laughs> so, although on that note though, trick like I, a, lot of, a lot of people are like tied to their server, right? Would you, would you take an option? Like, because obviously you're on Marama, a lot of people, mm, a lot of right. stuff's going on Marama, a lot of like North American streamers over there and stuff. Like, if you had the option, if you're in the queue and they give you that free option so you didn't have to wait, like, I, I don't know how long your queues were on Marama, but they were pretty insane, right? Would Ridiculous. You, would you take that option? I mean, if, I, if I'm a returning player or if I'm a new player, I mean, you shouldn't really care what you play at, right? Uh, the, the most important mm. thing is that you get to try and play the game. For a person that yeah. has a company or that has all of his friends there, then those people were basically stalking that server. Even though they were given the option, you know, uh, uh, it's not like everybody's now going to just drop to another server because we knew that the queues were only going to last like maybe like a week or two. And exactly that's pretty much how long it took for the queues to go away. So if you were one of those returnees or new players and you were given the option so you can actually try the game, 100% take it. But like you said, Unfortunately, it did not come when the main problems were happening with the big queues. But maybe for season, uh, for season eight, is that when when yeah. we get the new the new expansion? I guess so, right? I mean, we got season four coming up in December, mm -hmm. which is pretty cool because they yeah. they've like usually a season like is three months, so three months, it wouldn't right? be until January. But they're bringing this one like a month back, which I'm so happy they get to do trick because it feels like we you know we're getting to that point where you're like we're kind of getting slow in terms of like you mm -hmm. know played out most of the expansion now. I've still got like a few artifacts to get. I'm sure right, you're in the right. same situation, but generally we're like seeing most of it now. So I'm like ready for season four for some like new content you know i'm sure there's going to be a new outpush rush map right trick yes, finally of course yeah. uh, ranked arenas as well you know what i mean yeah. uh we, well they do actually have a cross of uh queuing coming for, for dungeon arenas, yeah and what about when is it coming for dungeon is dungeon coming in season four season and, uh, and arena, which then i'm hoping could lead into ranked so oh, oh okay yeah 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 i just lost it for a, a second yeah yeah 
Yeah, there's a little bit of lag there. I was actually just taking a look at the uh, play numbers as well to see what's happening. Apparently, we're still on an increase in terms of gain, which is cool to see. I was kind of thinking it was going to go down a little bit, but still yeah. says last 30 days we actually gained players. 41,000 people playing right now at this moment in time, so that's, that's not too bad. That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and the numbers of yours are obviously not as they were on release, but compared to before release, they've actually been pretty stable and, and higher than usual. So... We did gain a bunch of uh, new players, and we also got a bunch of new viewers. So mm. overall, I will say it was it was a pretty pretty good outcome for the game. And the the I will say one of the best things about it is like it cleansed the the, the bad reputation he had like a little bit, not too much, you know what I mean. But at least yeah. a lot of the people that tried the game this time around, they did not have as many negative, uh, you know, uh, views of the game. Like there was not like something really game breaking. And the game breakings mm. were like a little more deep, like mechanical, you know, like if we were talking about like PvP. But for a new player, they don't know what Shirking Hill is and they don't really care about the Shirking Hill Ong situation, you know? Uh, and those yeah. Were, the, yeah. So it was pretty, pretty much like the some some artifacts were stronger than others, but that was not really a bad experience for these players. So overall, I think mm. it was pretty good. I think it was a real shame to see like the like the Azar staff and the Heart Rune. Like a lot of people couldn't get those, and that was yeah. like majorly blocking yes. their progression. Because without the Azar staff, you can't do dungeons. Without without the Heart Rune, I mean, there's stuff you can do, but it, Heart Rune is like a pretty big yeah. deal, right? So yeah, actually, uh, I've managed to fix it in two weeks. But I feel like a, a lot of the problem is like in in the on in the internet uh, and in in gaming, two mm -hmm. weeks feels like two years. You know, trick. Like if you take a break from streaming for like two weeks, like people are like, you've been gone forever. Oh, <laughs> dude, dude so. I take a I take Fridays off. I come back Saturday. I'm like everybody's gone. I'm I've been That's like wait, where are you going? Yeah, you've been I, away forever. Trick. I, I've been forgotten. <laughs> it's like I, I, am I even a streamer anymore? Yeah, yeah. No. I mean, I took like uh, we nearly. I took about five days. Me and Gamji went away on holiday, and I missed the week, which was uh, Tempest Hot and oh what, no, what was it? I think it was the Depths and Dynasty Shipyard. So I wasn't able to get the Butcher mm -hmm. or the Lost Stopwatch. And okay. then I'm kind of sad because Lost Stopwatch looks uh, the Butcher is like so okay, fun. but Lost Stopwatch looks like pretty fun. It's yeah. like good at tanking, and then the the it looks kind of toxic in PvP to be honest. Dude, but <laughs> yeah, the, the the Spear Sword and Shield build, the Perma CC one. It's crazy. Yeah. Uh, what are you? So before we went into this expansion, mm -hmm. um, we were talking about artifacts and like what we, what we think are like going to be the best ones and the worst ones. I think both of us agreed that Inferno Fire Staff was pretty bad. And still um, is. I think afterwards, yeah, we could still agree <laughs> it's still really bad. Uh, is there any artifacts that have kind of surprised you, Trick, that you've seen where you're like, oh, that is like actually coming out of left field? One, I mean, I think Ankh is obviously one, course. right? Because we didn't even get to see it on the test server, so that thing's pretty <laughs> yes. bonkers. Uh, well, I mean, we didn't get Ankh in the test server, and also we didn't get the stopwatch. Like, neither of those two were were really there. Yeah. Um, I think the stopwatch was, but it was like bugged. Like, the, it was, I mean, the accessories, all of the accessories were pretty much bugged because we had Endless Thirst and the ring the ring yeah. was working with dots and endless thirst was oh. actually giving you minus healing i don't know if you heard about that bug that no but that does sound very new world <laughs> yeah so you know how endless thirst says that is the potions are 30 percent stronger right yeah so if you put it on instead of being 33 percent stronger it will be 30 percent weaker nice and, and, then, it, and the cooldowns are longer as well yes and then if you will take it off and put it on it will stack so it's now 60 percent weaker to the point that <laughs> to the point that the potions were healing you for zero healing and they yeah they had a 45 like a 35 second cooldown because instead of being 20% longer it was 40% longer so it, oh, it was not really like we got surprises like they were not even working <laughs> they were not there yeah. we couldn't test much right uh but definitely onk and, and and the thing is that people are super smart you know like people are smart people are creative and, and, like, we see, for example, like, the 100 stun percent duration, right? Like, we never really yeah. thought about that. But if you if you now put it into, like, wow, you can make it work in that sense. And you're like, oh, that's really smart. And, and that is the beauty about, you know, like, theory crafting and, and the artifacts. Because the artifacts are constantly changing the way the game is played. Because if some fight hit all of a sudden, you know, brings up a brand new way to play this artifacts they can really change the game because the artifacts have their own play style yeah like i i, I didn't rate the uh the hatchet from genesis that highly because hatchet you know it's like it's been nerfed like so many times it's not great right, right now but in pve 
like you can get some crazy good cooldown reduction with that thing because the, the thing is that i didn't like factor in as well as people are also using the refreshing torrent perk where you do the right and you the cooldown reduction is insane dude it's like you can spam abilities like no tomorrow and then also from a tanking perspective you put a carnelian gem in that bad boy you do berserk eight second eight meter aoe taunt then you immediately weapon swap weapon swap back so berserk goes on cooldown mm -hmm. and then you do the throwing the hatchet throwing. to like cut the cooldown right uh, and you can have like a permanent taunt which is like that is pretty good that is ridiculously good and on top of that yeah. you can you can have the poopy throw which is like a, a crazy aoe uh, yeah, yeah. I think throwing hatchet is actually. I don't know. Maybe it's like a. Is it? You think throwing hatchet is like a sleeper build? Because I didn't even realize the the exhausting throw is like almost the same stamina uh, regen damage as net shot, and right? It has and crazy net shot's healing. Pretty bonkers. So yeah, and it's AOE. It is so people people complain a lot about net shot, but it's just that like it's, like you said, poopy throw is an AOE exhaust. <laughs> it's an AOE <laughs> anti healing. And the cooldown yeah. is it's very short if you're using these things. So like the same with social distancing. You can use social distancing mm. like back to back to back to back. As long as the enemy is like close to you, you can use a social distance. The cooldowns go back dramatically. Then five seconds yeah. later, when he comes close to you, you use another social distancing. And for so the the reason I would say we're not seeing that many hatchet is because the hatchet artifact came rather late. You know, it, yeah, that's it, true. It came rather late, and the the hatchet it's 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 enforcing you to play with like this range abilities, and all the people have been now playing with other artifacts, which have been since the beginning, and they're like way more fun, right? Like the 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 spear, it's super super fun. We have serenity, it's an insane weapon. Why would you use hatchet when you have like a serenity, you know, that deals crazy damage? And you also have uh, pestilence. You have the great axe. The great axe. It's an amazing. What a what a mm. fun artifact to use. You know. So whenever you have this artifact, yeah. and the thing is that in, in this time that people were playing with this artifact, they already spent a lot of time, a lot of resources. The the chromatic seals, the ace of the inductor. And by the time they got to the hatchet, they either have no money. They're already too invested in the other uh, artifacts, or they don't really know what build they want to make with this hatchet. So just give it a little time, and like you said, I mean, for PvE, it seems like it has a great, a great place, right? And for PvP, you, mm -hmm. you, you, people will get creative with it, and we're definitely going to start seeing more builds. I mean, even Butcher. People thought that Butcher was not going to be that good, and Butcher turned out that it's actually a pretty good weapon for PvE and PvP. Yeah. Yeah, I never really considered that, but that makes a lot of sense, actually. Like, the reason why we're not, like, maybe some of these artifacts that are only arriving aren't, like, popular. Like, nobody's, like, saying, like, oh, dude, Void Darkblade is, like, insane, even though I think it's, like, pretty good. It's mm -hmm. even, like, potentially a little bit bugged or something, right? But um, it's because it's only arrived just now. So everybody's been making that build for the Abyss and stuff, because that was available for from the first day provided you got lucky with the portals right so like abyss builds have been like really popular and stuff but if abyss only just came out in a mutated dungeon now oh, then we imagine. wouldn't really have all the like raving and ranting exactly and, uh, if ankh was for some reason in, in like uh you know barnacles or any ad instead of in the pvp track then yeah dude the imagine if ankh was only just coming into the meta now it would make like a pretty the whole like, a game wild will be difference. different yeah. yeah and that is why so the w the time mm -hmm. these artifacts are coming out are completely shaping the game so it's not mm -hmm. that the hatchet is bad it's just that they we haven't caught up to it yet you know like just just give it time by the time season four comes out season four is going to come up with its own you know balance changes and and pvp changes yeah and, and yeah 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 yeah. I'm, I'm excited i'm excited for all the new builds that are coming in should be new artifacts in season four as well i yes. think that's what like uh Amazon. how many how many artifacts do you reckon we're gonna get in season four? i mean at, at this point i will be happy if we get the freaking bow and the ice gauntlet and the light staff and the <laughs> yeah. round shield, which, you know, we were kind of promised to get all these artifacts, but we didn't know that they were going to cut because... And, and I mean, if we do look, because this artifact were like data mine, right? We we know what some of these artifacts cannot do. Uh, like, mm. let's be real, you know, like the light staff, people sort of wanted it, but I don't think you would have been using the light staff if, if the light staff artifact came out because it really tanks your, your, your healing potential. And do you yeah, really uh... want to do damage with the light staff, or you rather just swap to the? F and, and the thing is, it's only like two damaging abilities that you have. You know, keen. Uh, I mean, beacon and orb. And it's it's not like the, yeah. it's very consistent damage. It, but it maybe it maybe somebody creates some crazy team group where you hit you with a shield bash, and then they like a heavy attack orb, 
and hit the enemy for like 7k, some crazy stuff like that. Uh, mm. But yeah, we didn't get the light staff, we didn't get the round shield, uh, the bow, the ice gauntlet. And yeah, I think that that's it. Those are the artifacts that we're missing. So yeah, do you, do you think the so if anybody hasn't seen, there has been like some data mining to su kind of suggest like they they did you know they have the uh, artifact ice gauntlet and life staff and stuff in the files and you can kind of look at what they were thinking there would be. Do you think it's going to be the same trick or do you think they're going to make so, them different? Because yeah, the life staff was like it was like a DPS life staff basically. Mm -hmm. You do more damage, but you do way le you do like fifty yeah, percent less healing. Less healing, right? And that is that is crazy because. Making 50% of the healing is way more dramatic than giving you 50% damage. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, Especially on a life staff, which is you know, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. oh, I'm going to do DPS. Yeah. I'm like, oh, what's your DPS weapon of choice? The life staff. The life staff. <laughs> if you had like another healing weapon that, that you could notorious be like... DPS weapon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. if it was on the void gun, maybe, you know, that'd maybe, be kind of interesting. Right. But if, or if you have another healing weapon, you're like, oh, I'm going to use the life staff for damaging and I'm going to use the mm. other one for healing. But that's not really the case. So in season yeah. four, unless we get it sooner, which it doesn't look like we will be. Uh, so in season four, it looks like we're going to get those artifacts that we're missing. And, mm. and, 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 and yeah, maybe, maybe we'll get more, but maybe, I mean, four for, for a whole season might not be too bad. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. And then if they do like, I'm imagining like, because there's, there's two artifacts in the season pass, so maybe they'll keep that again, another two artifacts. And then if they introduce a new dungeon, I think there's a new expedition, so there'll probably be another one in there. Mm -hmm. And then maybe they'll put like an artifact in Savage Divide, because I kind of found it weird how like Savage Divide is the new expedition, exactly. and yet it doesn't have an artifact and every other expedition does. It's a bit strange. Yeah, 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 so, yeah, that's, that's weird. Yeah, maybe. But probably, probably the bow or one of these ones that have not yet been released will be in the Savage Divide. Hmm, Yeah. What do you think about going back to Ankh? I feel like Amazon's been making a lot of changes lately. I mean, Shirking Heels obviously needed to be fixed. Mm -hmm. It wasn't even right. necessarily enough. It was fixing it to actually be what, what mm -hmm. they, it was. Mm -hmm. But I've seen them like they nerfed a healthy toast as well. They're going to be making it so you can't lifesteal. Uh, like lifestealing is affected by sacred ground and stuff like that. Do you think... I don't know. It, it, I, part of me is like wondering if they're like changing healing and stuff. And I've seen a lot of debate as well. Like lately, I think more people have been getting into three v three arena because they want after the serenity and mm -hmm. stuff. And I've seen time and time again people in Twitch chat and and in Reddit and stuff saying like we got enough life staff, we got enough healing and stuff. Just take healing out of the game. It's do you ridiculous. have Do you have any takes on that trick? Because I obviously it, it it hurts me as a life staff main that people complain about it so much. I, uh, I get it's unbalanced, but I don't know if it's necessarily it's not, broken. Man. What do you think? I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't. I, I think season three. It's the season that is being the easiest season to kill healers, in my opinion. There is so hmm. much burst. There is so much anti healing. There is so much damage. There is so much CC. That honestly, anybody that is complaining on a 3v3s nowadays about healers, simply it's either playing by themselves. And this is the other thing that people don't understand. You're playing by yourself. And then they're like, oh, we 3v3, we cannot kill a healer. But you're not really in a 3v3. You're in a 3v3 scenario, but you're playing by yourself and you're playing pretty much solo. Because you don't go into 3v3 and make a plan with the people you're in there. You don't even talk to them. You use your consumables, the gates open, you go forward and do you, and you do whatever the hell you want. And most of the time, the healer is not even contested. They're fighting a bruiser that is on top of a sacred ground. And they're like, oh my god, healers are so overpowered. I cannot kill yeah, this guy. Got Ankh as well, of course. <laughs> because he's, he's standing on top. And I'm like, well, I mean, whose fault is that, you doofus? And like, me, myself, I don't have a problem with healers. And if two DPSs that are like queuing together have a problem with healers, then that is a skill problem. Because, man, it's so easy to kill healers nowadays. It's ridiculous. But the main, the main problem why we cannot kill healers, I mean, not we, but like the people that cannot, is because you guys are playing the 3v3 solo. You guys are not being coordinated. And obviously, the healer is not be, it's not designed so it can be killed by one player. Because the healer mm. is designed that they're su supposed to heal a full group of five, you know? So obviously, the heals need to be stronger in, in a 1v1 scenario. But if you do have like an anti-heal build, or if you have like a full burst build, and you you can really train that healer into make it that either they heal themselves so they don't die or they heal one of the, the other teammates and and in that moment your teammates should be doing what they're supposed to be doing either killing the dps or helping you kill the healer so the the reason why the healers are so strong is not really because the healers are as strong as people think it is it's just because the dps is bad and, and mm, that's really yeah. that's really the main problem
if the DPS was better, the healer would have not been as good as, as it was because a lot of healers, the majority of healers freak out whenever they get like two melees on top of them. And yeah, yeah dude, imagine I mean, just, just one uh, as soon as I see a blunderbuss, like I'm sweating. Yeah, dude, or <laughs> one great axe sword that, shield. All the all the the freaking scorpion Traveling. sting. Like, exactly. You get, they pull you in and then you get back up and then they leg sweep and, you and, they, and you get back up and then they yeah. team vault kick you and you're like, geez, dude. As a healer, but then like I have a choice. I need to heal myself or heal my teammate. But exactly. somebody's gonna die. And if if somebody synergizes with that guy that hit you with a scorpion, and and after that he falls it off with like a wrecking bro, you you're done you know because it's not like you can go from from like 30 percent back to 100 without doing anything no you need to either put the sacred ground which it's an animation and then on top of the sacred ground you need to use a potion and if you got hit by a net shot if you got hit by like a poopy throw which is an exhaust and an anti-heal like there's so many ways to counter healer it's just that the dps don't want to do that the dps just want to play the mode and have no problems killing the people in front of them because the thing is, mm -hmm. 9 out of 10 matches is usually DPS versus DPS. And usually it just goes in pretty smooth, right? Some people lose, some people win. But whenever they face a healer, it's not that the healer is strong. It's just that they're not playing the game the correct way they're playing it. Um, yeah. And if you play like... Uh, like if, you, if you're in a group of three people and play against a group of three people, the healers are not that hard to kill. If they're coordinated, the healer goes down immediately quick or one of the DPS goes down immediately quick because we're done 3v3 tournaments and stuff like that. And the healers are not an issue at all. It, the the fights yeah. go down really quickly unless both teams are on top of their game peeling for their healers. Or whenever they're the deep, one of the DPS is about to go down, uh, the healers start peeling for them. But that it comes to, you know, like skill levels. Mm. I do see some people in chat talking about like a solo versus duo Q versus three stacks and stuff. I agree. I think in an ideal world, you know, and fingers crossed, we're going to see something like this once we get cross server um, 3v3 arena and stuff that we, you know, duos, there should be a duo in the enemy team. Ideally, maybe even like a roll queue if one team has a life staff, the other team has a life staff to kind of like mirror it. I think that'd probably be better for the casual experience from like, you know, if there was competitive arena, then, you mm -hmm. know, kind of anything goes. And as you've said, like it's perfectly dealable with, but. Yeah, I think, uh, fingers crossed, we're going to see kind of some sort of matchmaking with that in the future. Uh, what do you think? Um, I, I'm, like, excited for the fact, I don't know if you saw, Scott said in an interview that uh, we're also going to have, like, an automated dungeon finder as well, Trick, for, like, mm -hmm. expeditions. Yeah. So I'm, like, wondering, you know, what it's, if somebody comes in with, like, a musket warhammer, like, <laughs> what's going to happen there, dude? Are we... Um, I don't know. I mean, you, it's gonna be like it's a good thing, I think, but there's gonna be gonna be some people that troll it. But then I guess you could say the same could happen in arena and stuff as well, right? Somebody right, could exactly. come in with musket wall hammer. So. Um, so if you want, but I think to, I guess the only thing is you can do as many arenas as you want, whereas you do have a limited number of expeditions you can do. I will week, say so. the expedition should not count until you go through the gate and not once you are in the in the lobby area, because that is mm. that is one big deal. If you if you do queue out. First of all, the people that queue for this type of queue are the people that don't have a legit team. People that don't have friends or people that don't play with friends, right? Uh, so they're doing this because that is the solo player uh, approach. And if you're doing a, a, a solo player approach, then you should be ready to, to have this kind of people. And if they make it that the, the count to the dungeon is not through the gate, if you see that somebody's trolling or something like that, you can simply just either... Uh, try to remove them out of the out of the dungeon and obviously this needs to be anonymous right it's not like if you see a guy with musket uh and and and, and you don't want it you, you know if everybody agrees that guy can be kicked the, the, the same thing happened in wow for the solo queue thing if somebody mm. you know you go in there and there was one guy that was pulling mobs and he was not the tank and he was making it like more difficult for the people they would just you know kick him out obviously for mutation it's a little bit different because we have like a time factor and stuff of this. But if you don't want to deal with any of these solo player problems, then just get yourself a core group that you guys do mutations together. You know, and it's the same mm. thing with arenas or OPR. If you queue solo arenas, just know that you're going to get the teamies and the bobs. If you want to not lose arenas, then eventually when ranked arenas come out in the future, you queue with your group of threes or you, you queue with yeah. a group of two, you know? So there is player, player, you know, like choices. Like if you want to queue quickly for this mutated Lazarus and, 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 and you don't want to like waste a lot of time, just go ahead and do the solo queue. And I'm pretty sure that anybody that queues for mutation three, let's say, I mean, they have to be like 695 or above. So I'm pretty sure 
they will have like a respective gear plus the community is really not that toxic where people are going to purposely use like musket ball for mutations that's really not yeah, going to happen true. like the chances of that happening is like so rare people actually would like to take that seriously because they don't want to waste time and if they are wasting somebody else's time the people would just simply leave yeah, I don't think anyone's actively trolling. I mean, you know, it's not right, a crime right. to be like, like if you if you're not like the highest mechanically skilled player, that's not like a bad thing. But I don't think any, yeah, I don't, I don't think the number of people that are actively going into like arena or outpost rush or uh, mutated expeditions mm -hmm. and like legitimately trying to just be the worst player they can be, I think that's like a very small number of people actually. So that's pretty good. Yeah, and um, if, if you were to, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, if you were to add something like like a damage meter, probably in the future. Because with mm. a solo queue, right, that means that a lot of people are going to go either with creative builds. What I mean by creative builds are not the builds that are considered meta for PvE, right? But if one of these creative builds, and if we have like a DPS shard, are, we've seen that it's like pumping the damage more than your meta build, then, you know, that, that's, how, that's how metas will be created. People are like, oh my god, I didn't know that musket bolt could do that damage. They have like crazy AoEs, and then for bosses, they have like crazy damage, like... Yeah, that guy was using Spear Great Axe, but the Bull Musket was doing three times the damage that he was in the boss fight, mm -hmm. right? So they have, like, their their niche where these builds can be used. And I understand a lot of people will be like, as well, no, Trick, the damage meter will just create toxicity. I, I mean, toxicity has been in the game since the very goddamn beginning, where you couldn't get into a dungeon unless you had, like, Spear Hatchet for, like, the first year and a half. Or if you didn't have, like, Great Axe, Great Sword, you were not getting invited. Like, good luck trying to mm -hmm. get into a Mutation 10 with freaking like fire stab ice gauntlet people were like what do you think this is freaking wow get out of here yeah so yeah toxicity's always been there it'd be interesting to see a poll on like uh you know the player base like how many people want a damage meter and how many people don't want because I, I feel like i see like a 50 50 split like and, and I, I see both sides of the coin you know i i mean and like when i play world of warcraft or other mmos if there is a dps meter you bet your biscuits i'm going to put it on but at mm -hmm. the same time i do feel like some of the things with New World, I'm always like a little bit cautious about with New World, where it's like, I want to see things in New World that we don't have that are in something like World of Warcraft, like Ranked Arena, like, uh, you know, high-end raids, and um, maybe even like a, a vendor that you can, you know, like the, the, the PvP vendor in World of Warcraft, so you can just buy like higher ranked PvP gear. But at the same time, I don't want New World to become World of Warcraft. Right, I want right. it to stay, keep the things that make New World unique. So it's, uh, it's always a tricky balance. Um... I wanted to get your opinion trick on like we were talking about artifacts earlier and and the grind and stuff like that. Right. Uh, Amazon have announced that they've got like a a plan coming up, so it's it's kind of more just a a debate over you know how we feel about it rather than whether it's actually going to happen because I think they are making the change. But um, I'm sure you've experienced it to some degree, trick like whether it's trying to get the void dark plate from barnacles or like looking for some you know pestilence. How long mm -hmm. did it take you to get pestilence in the rewards track? Do you think that uh, it's it's fair right now with the way artifacts work? Do you think like this pity system is better? Because I, I see people, I've, I've I've not you know, not a small number of people saying like, oh, Baggins, they they're making the game too easy. You know, you shouldn't be able to guarantee you get things. Like it should just be a grind and stuff like that. What's your take on like artifacts Honestly, and so why we acquire them right now? My take for artifacts is artifact is an item that when you acquire, it's not that powerful. Correct. So if it is not a powerful item that you are acquiring, it should be simpler to acquire. And for me, the complexity and the difficulty should come from the challenges and the quests that you do to upgrade these items. In my opinion, mm. if you, for example, if the dark plate comes from barnacles and black powder, the chances of you getting that dark plate is as high as you getting your hard run, right? Which is like 90%. But now... Okay. Where the missions come in for you to unlock the power of the item, that's where the difficulty and the grind should come from. Because getting a shitty item that it takes you four weeks to get and then get the full power of the item in less than one hour, I think that doesn't make any sense to me. You could literally make a full storyline on every artifact, explaining their background and making you explore the world and actually taking time and, 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 and make these artifacts, you know, it, it will also feel way more rewarding. Uh, because mm -hmm. also a lot of the artifacts, you can put like, all of the PvP artifacts, you can put like Ankh, Serenity, and, and, and like the, the, the Tumblr shoes, for example. And you go and you do the same missions for all three of them and you get the maximum power for all three of them because all three of them 
have the same exact quest and you can do it all super quick, right? Sometimes it take mm. it took you four weeks or, or it took people hundreds of portal to get the great axe, right? And then the the the, the power for the great axe were unlocked like in the next 35 minutes to 40 minutes. And there yeah. was so much time that people were not able to play with the great axe, and all of a sudden they get it and it's fully powerful. Instead, give it to the people rather quickly and they can see their actual character progression because that is what we honestly that is what one of the main reasons why i love to play mmos is have a weak character that becomes stronger so if mm. you give us the weak weapon right away and we spend time and effort into making this weapon stronger every time we get a perk we feel the increase in power right whenever you get that refreshing move on the abyss you felt it and now for the next day or two you're playing with refreshing move and then the next day after that you get the next perk um, and, and for me, that is where the, the, how honestly it should have been because right now you go a bunch of time without playing without artifact, you get it. And then you do the quest and you're like, oh, wait, hold on. I finished two quests. What did I get? Oh, uh, keen and whatever. Okay. Yeah. Let's finish the other quest. And, and you don't even, yeah. you don't even care what you got. All you want to do is just finish all the quests so you can actually play with a weapon. Yeah, that sounds. I never really thought about it that way, but that does sound kind of better. Like, so basically, everybody, you know, getting the artifact itself isn't necessarily like the the time investment or anything, but it's just like getting the artifact powered up, like actually making it feel like you know exactly. an artifact, like an awful weapon that you're unlocking. However, one thing I will say, trick though, if we are going to go down that route, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, in a hypothetical situation, I mean, we do, we need it now, but I think we definitely need it. That we need more than five flipping artifact quest slots, <laughs> you know, <laughs> locking it to five. I don't know. What do you think about that? Like the five uh, artifact quests, because this is a lot of people who seem to be getting blocked by the fact that they don't have the dark matter or the seals it's, and they, it's, it's, they want more. I don't know what the idea behind it was. I think the idea yeah. behind it is like, oh, we don't want them to get all of the artifacts uh, quests at the same time so they finish all artifact quests at the same time. Then you should have not making them repetitive quests. You should have not made weapons share the same quest. And then maybe you yeah. should have made it that it's not that easy to, to accomplish so you cannot finish 25 artifact quests in one day. Just make it hmm. make it different. Just give each artifact a different quest line, and just like that, you avoid the problem. And if people want to do one quest today with Abyss, and one quest tomorrow with Ank, and one quest the other day with the other weapon, and be leveling them up at whatever rate they want to, you know, let them. But the problem they did they went with that route is because like we don't want people to upgrade all the artifacts in one go. Well, you mm. messed up because you took the easy way out and made all the artifacts share the same freaking quest, basically. Yeah. I tell you what, that's something related to artifacts, but like kind of tangential. But also, I think it's like a universal kind of annoyance, like with the quest, but also for PVEs and P mm -hmm. PVPers across the board. Magnify trick. What do you what do you think oh. about Magnify? How are you feeling about that one? Because I've seen some people talking about Reddit and stuff, and and like we'll give a little yeah. bit of context just in case anybody isn't like if you haven't been playing New yeah, World yeah. or whatever. Magnify is a stat line where basically whatever you have your most points put into, that's what Magnify becomes. So if if Trick was had a Magnify pair of boots and he put most of his points into intelligence, those are intelligence boots. If I had the same boots like artifacts and I put my points into focus they would become focus boots, which sounds really cool, right? That does sound really good. But the problem is when you have multiple pieces of magnify gear, like you have three, three. like three artifacts, That's for example, because all, pretty much all artifacts have magnify, it's all of those items suddenly become one stat. So you have a 90 point stat disparity between mm -hmm. one and the other. And if you're trying to get to like, you know, uh, let's say like 200 int, uh, 100 focus, 100 con or something like that. It's you can't because they, they have to be more than 90 points apart, if that makes sense. So uh, but I've seen some people saying uh, that I've got sorry, I'm, I'm ranting <laughs> no, already because no, no, you it, can go tell how I feel about it. So people say like magnify. Uh, should be bad. It shouldn't be the best thing in the game because um, it encourages you to go get crafted gear. It encourages you to hunt for better items. Magnify is just like a, a crutch or a stepping stone in order to get better items. Um, that's what they've been saying. I have my thoughts on it, but let's hear what you have to say first, Trick, well, before, you know, first, what, do you, what do you think about it? First, let's bring back by what the developer said, why they, being in, why they introduced Magnify. And the reason the developers said that they were introducing Magnify so could you could utilize the same gear for different builds but mm. that is not the case but uh, you know because if you want to on one build go 350 intelligence and 200 strength and like 50 focus 
you, you can, right? Because uh, you have a couple of Magni 5 intelligence piece. Uh, but then mm -hmm. if you want to do like a 300, 300, well, I, I, I'm sorry, you cannot do that one. You know, if you want, the best I can do is 401 and 150 on the other. And, and then if you want to put like 10 points on the other, then the other one goes to 400 and freaking 50. And the other one goes down to like 100. And then you need to sacrifice other. So now let's see, maybe let's give him the benefit of the doubt and say that the reason they did it this way is to avoid like the very strong uh, attribute combinations. Like let's say going like uh, 300, 300 and like five con musket, you know, like 300 dexterity, 300 intelligence to avoid mm -hmm. having like an insane amount of damage in the game or, uh, uh, you know, uh, avoiding going like 300 strength and 300 constitution, which you cannot, I mean, you can still get there, but it's so unnecessarily complicated. And when you actually changing from one build to another, it's not as a smooth transition as they will wanted it to be. Uh, yeah. it, it brings a lot of complication and it also limits the player on how many pieces of magnifies they can have forcing the players to sometimes having to ditch a magnified piece and being forced to either craft it or buy it out of the marketplace so they can now, you know, have their bills. So, yes, there is the barriers. And I understand getting gear now, getting gear now, it's easier than it has ever been before. Um, mm. But if the way of you limiting the players on having more builds is by annoying the living crap out of them with a magnify, it's, it's, it's outrageous. Maybe... Maybe reduce the amount of items, uh, the named items that are like very powerful if you don't want people to get gear too quickly. But having an unnecessary obstacle with this attribute distribution is, is just so frustrating because it, yeah. it is nothing more than frustrating. You know, that is the, the, the description of it. And if what you wanted was to be able to use more builds with the same gear, then instead of forcing this attribute to be one specific attribute, Anything that has magnified should immediately go into your attribute pool, right? If mm -hmm. you if if you reset your attributes, right, and you have let's say 600 attributes, and you put a magnified piece instead of that magnified piece, giving you immediately 35 intelligence, and you still have the 500 attributes. No, if you put a magnified piece, you should have 535 attributes, and you should put those the way that you want to. That way, you can really use the magnified gear with whatever build you want to without being limited to a stat allocation. Yeah, I do think that would make it pretty powerful. Um, like if you could just literally give you like whatever flexible points you want. I think like a compromise that I'd be willing to make is just allow me to take the item, item especially with the artifacts as well, because mm -hmm. people say like, oh, magnify shouldn't be too good because it should encourage you to go get crafted gear. But you you have to have magnify in the artifacts. And you like well, most of the time we want to use the artifacts, right? Yeah, like cool, the, the new thing so so you want to be using the artifacts but they're stuck with magnify and, unless and there's, there's like the great ways of town or something and yeah there's three of them as well so yeah. if i want to play like uh let's say i'm playing like gila and i got like artifact uh um you know like ank and uh void gauntlet and a piece of armor that's already like three pieces there yeah. i can't put any more magnify that's in it. otherwise if you, if you want to do like 350 focus 250 constitution mm -hmm. you can't because like the stat swing wouldn't work exactly. you have to add, either have like 400 focus and like 100 <laughs> Yeah. uh con or something like that it becomes very dumb very fast so yeah. um what i was trying to say is like with magnify pieces like a compromise maybe if like being able to just perfectly assign the stats you want is too powerful allow us to like bake an item onto a particular stat so like get a seal from the faction vendor like you can um with the old faction gear back in the day and some of the stuff from the hatchery and turn it into a particular stat you know like mm. I'd, I'd make that compromise as well it would be a pretty uh rough one to make you know if you wanted to like always lock your uh featherweight chest to be constitution or something but then you want to play a build that has like almost no con but at least you know you can not get like annoyed by magnify but, every time you try and change your stats yeah, around no but what you said it, it makes sense even constitution has more fluidity than magnification that's a crazy thing yeah you can play more yeah. builds if your accessories and your weapons are like constitution and you change the other pieces that magnify because what you said Three magnification mm. is pretty much puts you right there at the limit. If you get, if you want to put a fourth one, all your stats are all messed up. You're, you're, you cannot yeah. you cannot achieve what you wanted to achieve.
Dude, it's so, so yeah, annoying as well when I'm just like, uh, I'm just like, I just do a quick stat switch before I leave the gates for like mm -hmm. Outpost Rush to start an expedition. And then I click the button and it goes, and I'm like, oh my <laughs> God, dude, every time magnify. It's like, oh, yeah. you thought you were going to do your stats nice and easy? Well, mm -hmm. tough, dude. This is how your stats are going to be, Vagans. Yeah. I'm like, no. Yeah, so um, <laughs> I don't want to do 450 focus. I do. I, so <laughs> I, I, I have a PvE ring, right? That is basically all I had to change when I'm going from PvP to PvE. And mm. I, my, all my stats are beautiful, but that ring is magnified and it puts me on four pieces. So yeah. I have like 350 in, um, 200 strength and like, you know, like 100 con. And I put that ring and all of a sudden it goes like, boom, 350 con. I'm like, bro, what? Like, that doesn't make any sense. Why were you doing this? And then I had to change my stats and, it, and it's not even easy because now I cannot really play with like 50 con and it becomes annoying. Mm, I see Sonic Quake saying, isn't this the first time you recognize playing test in this? We did see it on the PTR, and we did yeah. say it was bad on the PTR. Yeah. And yeah. credit where credit is due, I guess. They did change it a little bit, because it used to be on the PTR. You didn't even see your stats changing until you locked them in, so you had no idea what was going to happen. But um, yeah, that was... That kind of sucked, dude. Mm -hmm. What's your take, uh, Trick, on another thing that's like a pretty big uh, time gate? You know, with the, what do you think about Dark Matter and Chromatic Seals? Have you got any positive or negatives on that or stuff? Because there is quite a bit of... You know, other than time gating in terms of waiting for artifacts to become available from, right. from mutated, mutated expeditions, we're also seeing like dark meta. Amazon, obviously, there was the Yeti farm recently, and then they took that out. So clearly, mm -hmm. they do want to have it be like slow to acquire. Slow, you right. think? Uh, what do you, um, what, are you having any troubles with uh, troubles with chromatic seals at dark meta? Or do you think it's okay? Chromatic seals. Chromatic seal is the main problem because there's plenty of activities that can give you dark matter, and hmm. the more dark matter you get, is the better and the more pe community. Because if you have a sandworm community. That you do your sandworm basically every week you will never have any problem with dark matter right if you have a, mm. a group of five people that you constantly do m3s in like 10 minutes you will never have a problem with dark matter <clears throat> you know especially if you do like your elite trains obviously with a yeti was like the best thing ever because you were getting more than any other way and you were like semi-fk so obviously that was not the, the intent that they wanted to now, the main mm. problem that we have it is with the chromatic seals because it doesn't matter if you get a thousand dark matters in one day, you're limited to that one chromatic seal in a day. So, yeah. and, and when these resources are not going hand in hand uh, together, in, in my opinion, if you're going to put one dark matter with a 24 hour on the vendor, then you should at least, least give us another way to get another dark matter in one day. And I think, go, not dark matter, I'm sorry, chromatic seal. Going from one I chromatic that, yeah. seal a day to two chromatic seal, that will that will be insanely, you know, that will change the whole thing because now in three days you can do two pieces instead of one piece. So it literally, you know, the amount and doing one piece every like two days, that is pretty much going to be equivalent to the amount of dark matter that you're getting in two days, right? And the mm. way that we can maybe where do we get this other chromatic seal trick? Well, how about this? The the island that they made, the Servant Island in, in the Elysian Wild, right? That uh, it was where you take the Life Taker and you have all of these brand new resources. There should be like a like a world boss or something in there that spawns once a day that people kill it and it gives you one chromatic seal and it, it should be like 20 plus. It's like a world boss like Balfathu or like something like that, right? Uh, yeah. And if people, if, if you're like, well, Trey, but you know, only people will kill it like a certain time of day. It's like, no, that's not true because people do like elite trains like throughout the whole day. If you miss one mm. elite train at three, there's going to be another elite train at seven, right? And it's going to be the same thing for the world boss, right? And, and I mean, and, yeah. And that I was will, just going to say, you know, I, I don't know about you, Trick, but the, the Halloween event, like I'm doing like basically none of it. Like, I don't know. Oh, man. dude, uh, I, 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 got, I got my stuff and then I'm just like checked uh, out. But you know what would make sense for the event is like, what if you could trade in like 50 of the Halloween tokens for like a chromatic seal or something like that? Suddenly people would actually do the do, event. Do but. the event. And, and the, the thing is, it's not like the, 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 the we don't. I, I would have to have like a cool man it. on it, by the way. Before chat's like, oh, that would be broken. You'd have to only be able to get like so many, you know, one a day or whatever. Right, one again, a, but... I mean, just going from one chromatic seal to two chromatic seals a day, it's like a phenomenal change. A, a such a great change. Um, mm. 100%. It's not like people don't want to do it. It's just that there's not rewards to do it. If Balfazu, if Halloween this, this season, if instead of being a, a pattern 675, there would have been 700... Bet your butt that there's going to be a hundred people farming Balfasua out there every single hour of the day. And if they yeah. will drop like the good things, like more skins or just more, it's just that it was pretty much the same because 
the majority of the players in New World are not new or returning players. The majority of the player in New World are still veteran players. And if you are going to basically cycle the same thing that you gave these people the last year, all you're doing is, okay, these people are not simply going to do the event. They're just going to get the two things that are new to the event, which they can get in one day. And then they don't need to do the event any, you know, any more than that. And then the new players are like, why is nobody doing this? It's like, well, because the veterans and the people that should be here, they don't, they got nothing to get from this. And mm -hmm. like, if you go to the servant island right now, like right now that the popularity has gone down and the hype has died, there's barely anybody farming the life taker. Like if you go there sometimes to farm the life taker, you got to farm that shit yourself, you know? Yeah. Um, and I went to go do my quest for, uh, the, I got the Scorpion Sting to drop yesterday. So uh -huh. I was like, all right, I'm going to level up Scorpion Sting because it's cool. And you have to go kill Mantrapala, the guy who dropped right. the finisher uh -huh. rapier. And I was like, oh, dude, don't worry. There's going to be loads of people there for the for the finisher rapier. There was like one guy there. Hey, that's what <laughs> I'm saying. like, oh, no, dude. So it's going to get harder the longer it goes, I guess. As that well. island is a perfect example of how something died really quick. And it was just a perfect place to put like a world boss. That And if you put a world boss, right, that you can kill once a day, uh, and it gives you like a chromatic seal, bro. The amount of people cycling through that island will be insane. Like any new player, yeah. and it will give the players a brand new purpose to go back there. We'll probably see some more world PvP. They just the player base being happier all around because now they have two chromatic seals. They can craft more gear. Because, <clears throat> for example, myself today, <clears throat> excuse me, I got my third chromatic seal. For the past three days, we're like, chat. We cannot craft anything. Uh, well, I was banned for one of those, but the other two, yeah. um, I was like, well, I mean, we cannot do anything today. We got to wait until tomorrow. And now today I got the third chromatic seal. And guess what? I cannot do anything else until three days from now, because that's when I get the next uh, three chromatic seals. Mm, yeah. Yeah I, yeah, I don't know. I think it, it would be nice to see, like, more of them mm -hmm. being accessible. I also see, like, a lot of people as well. And I, it's, like, I do understand to some degree. Like, a lot of people, I, it seems, you know, to, to you know, lords of New World, like, as <laughs> trick. <laughs> And and some people in chat like five thousand gold are like oh it's nothing but for some people five thousand gold is quite a lot so I think if there were like alternative methods that encourage you to do like more of the content and like cycle through the content again to so go back and maybe do the corrupted portals to get some gold or something that would mm -hmm. be like yeah be uh, cool. help them out as well also so, yeah uh, another thing that they should be thinking about it which I don't know what they did in uh, chromatic seal should have a stacking mechanic where if you don't buy a chromatic seal today tomorrow you can buy two chromatic seals. Because this creates mm. people don't want to leave on vacation or people don't want to stop playing the game because if they do lose one of these chromatic seals, they will be left behind. And what of a player <laughs> that he starts to play that he started to play and didn't play for like two weeks? You know how behind that person is? Missing 14 chromatic seals? That's like a whole freaking set that they will not be yeah, able to dude. grab. So when it, me and uh we and Gamji went on holiday on, on uh -huh. vacation, we, we were in like this uh, cabin in the woods in like the middle of nowhere. There wasn't any internet. Every day we would like uh leave and drive with a laptop until we could get a uh, signal so uh -huh. we could connect it to the phone so we so I could log in and buy my chromatic That's, seal. Even though that? we're on even that though we're on ridiculous. holiday. ridiculous. <laughs> you cannot even enjoy your vacation. I, I, I didn't want to miss the chromatic seal. It's such a big <laughs> deal, especially if you're a player that wants to stay competitive and, and, and like a content mm -hmm. creator, you don't want to fall behind. And and now we cannot even enjoy a vacation because all we're thinking about is this goddamn chromatic seal. At least make it like a like a seven stackable, you know, so you give people like a, at least one week. If you go for a month and you come back, like there's no like you 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 shouldn't be buying 30 chromatic seals, but at least a, a week, mm -hmm. you know? So if you're like sick for one day, man, you're in the hospital, freaking you broke like a leg or something like that. And you're like, bring me a laptop. I need to <laughs> I buy my, my chromatic, chromatic seal. seal. Yeah, like, it's like, bro, you're <laughs> dying. It's like, yeah, but I don't want to fall behind. You know what I mean? So and you might you might miss the week where uh, the dungeon is up. I, like I can't I cannot miss Tempest Heart Week because I need to get those magnetic gauntlets. Otherwise, I get to wait a month again for them to show back up. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yes. yeah, it's, it's hopefully well. Hopefully, we get to see some changes. I'm I'm excited to see the season four and also the roadmap for. 2024 oh, as well I, man there's a lot yeah. of stuff i still want to talk about trick but i gotta i gotta um, we're doing the sandworm in 15 minutes and Ooh, i gotta prep some stuff yeah ready. you gotta do that gotta get my dark matter dude 420 dark matter 420 dark matter dude uh, it's actually to... the amount you get for a weekly kill that's crazy right 420 <laughs> what, a, what a great number uh but uh, yeah b sounds good man we should do that because definitely there's a lot more topics that we want to talk about 
And, I agree. I and agree, and dude, by the yeah, time we, we do the next podcast, stuff. we probably have like freaking season four around the corner. And yeah, yeah, it will be in the next expansion. Yeah, we'll be like, well, what about the other? Well, there's no point in talking about those things anymore, Trek. Yeah, I mean, in I think in both of us' defense, we were so busy with the expansion. Oh there's so many goodness, guides and man. content we wanted to do, so it should be like more chill now. We should be able to get and, the podcast hopefully on a more weekly. Yeah. On a more, I don't want to say weekly, but weekly, frequent yeah. basis. At least at least yeah. bi-weekly or maybe like monthly, because yeah. it's, it's been like two months now that we haven't done one. And talk about being busy. Your website. What is it? Play oh yeah, versus, dude, yeah. We we, we, we should do we world? should do a we should do a plug because I think for both of these websites we'd only maybe I think you had uh, New World Champ just going, but I think the URL was different back then as well. Yeah, I, I yeah, keep yeah. telling chats newworldchamp.info, but it's now .com, right? It's that com. It is that com. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so for, for YouTube and and for the podcast um, description notes, me and Trick both have websites now for builds and guides um, in regards to New World. So we have nwchamp dot com you will mm -hmm. champ.com you've been it's pvp but now you're also doing some pve builds in there yeah, as well right yeah yeah man so many people were asking like where can i find just like pve builds and i was like i guess i'm doing it and to be fair be in my defense i didn't know you were making that website uh i was just there were so many people asking for builds as well for yes. like pve so i was like all right here we go so we i have uh player versus new world which is pvnw dot net and again mm -hmm. we'll have them linked uh in the youtube and the show notes and stuff like that but nwchamp.com or um pvnw.net uh for the for the builds and guides and, and you have trick. some great information right there like you actually go very in depth with like the builds that you have created um while new world champ is more like a surface build right it gives you like like this is what you should be aiming for and this is like how the skill look in case you don't have a lot mm -hmm. of information but if you want to like learn more like deep dive in the information then they can go to your website and and learn more learn more there yeah, and we also put the, so many people ask, like, what damage do I need for this mutation? So I've got that up there now as well. So Hellfire's <laughs> rubies, you know, because it's like. Yeah. it is. <laughs> All right, Trick, yes. I got to uh, I gotta get out of here, man. I got to get Sandworm to kill. Hopefully, God, it's not going to, oh, man, we, no, we can get it down. Hopefully you got one of those 15-minute ones, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, thank you so much, everybody, for listening. Appreciate you guys a lot. New podcast will be coming soon, TM um trick thank you for being mr trick as always oh, appreciate you dude thank you for the love and the support b as always catch you next time ben catch you bye. guys bye bye